Okay, very good. Dear Father Spitzer, yeah. this is a tough one. My father, my son was born with radial dysplasia. That is missing part of his wrist bone and thumb on one hand. He often asked me why God would make him that way. I've told him that we don't always have the answers or the understanding why things like that occur. I know as he is approaching his teens, this is becoming a harder question. What scripture or how should I respond to show him that God loves him and has a purpose for all things? And this is Kate. Well, Kate, I mean, the first thing to, to tell your son is, you know, 99% of the productive things that are done in this world are done by people who don't feel 100% well. But we all have some kinds of intrinsic difficulties. You know, and you know, you might say, well, why did God give me a genetic disorder that would make me blind when I am 64? Mm -hmm. You know, why would he do that to me? You know, now, uh, I mean, that's a, a perfectly legitimate question in a way. But that's, I think, the real thing, the real question to ask is not so much why did God do this to me? I mean, the, radial dysplasia happens because of a genetic, uh, you know, uh, proclivity. It, it, so, the, so there's something there. My blindness happened because of a genetic proclivity. I didn't know about it before I was 30, but I discovered it. Now, he knows about it a little sooner, and, it, and it's affecting him, and it's affecting his, uh, you know, how he, you know, uh, uh, has interactions with his peers and things of that nature. I mm -hmm. can totally understand that. But the real question is why, not why am I different? Because you won't be so different as you move into the future. All of our weaknesses begin to manifest themselves as we move into the future. And, and so the, the question that we should be asking ourselves is, number one, how do I manage this? to get the following things. So I, I want to use what I've got, the struggles that I have. How am I going to use this to help other people? How am I going to use this so that I can get to heaven? How am I going to use this? Now, of course, when you're a 15-year-old, I think you said, mm -hmm. right? it's hard to look at that as a 15-year-old and, and answer those questions. But what you can do is point to people who have just, there are so many excellent testimonies that point to what people have done who have much, much, much more to contend with than radial uh, dysplasia. You know, I mean, there's so many people who are born blind, born deaf. I mean, uh, you know, I, I admit having a wrist disorder is, is bad. But what I think I would do uh, before I gave him a scripture, you know, that explains this. The one thing I want you to do is to find some of those books. There mm -hmm. used to be one that was really good called All I Can Give about a person who was a complete quadriplegic mm -hmm. and uh, wrote this book about, you know, what he could do lying flat on his back, having, you know, people attend to him. Uh, all the time and and that was a good one but there's lots of testimonies of blind people who talk about the virtues of, of actually having this disorder and I talk about it in my books mm -hmm. you know how it has purified my own heart how it has led me closer to God mm -hmm. but the one scripture I would probably point out is probably um, 2 Corinthians chapter 12 where Paul starts off by saying this but don't go there first Give him some testimonies first. Then go to 2 Corinthians 12, and Paul says, you know, he's, he's basically saying, you know, he's asking the Lord. He's saying, you know, I was given a thorn in the flesh. Right. Now, the thorn in the flesh, a lot of people think, well, this is some sort of spiritual disorder or something. It's not. I think it was blindness. Hmm. Paul was having acute vision problems. There's a ton of evidence for this in the scriptures. I mean, it's all over the letter to the Galatians. I mean, you, you gouge out your own eyes and give them to me if you could. Now, why would he say that to the Galatian people if he wasn't having an eye no. problem? No. Why would he say, this is being written by my hand? You know, it's big letters, you know. Uh, you, know the, you know, or why would he mistake, a, 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 you know, the, the high priest in, in the Acts of the Apostles, I think it was whatever, chapter 26, when, you know, he, he calls the high priest, what do you want of me, you whitewashed wall? 
And the attendant goes, well, is that any way to talk to the high priest? Oh, excuse me, sir. I didn't know you were the high priest. Mm -hmm. Now, Paul was a Pharisee. He would have recognized a high priest. And why would he call him a whitewashed wall anyway? Okay, I think the guy's having eye problems. He doesn't say that, but I think his thorn in the flesh was really a thorn in the flesh, mm -hmm. in his body, in his ability to act. Now, you just say, okay, so what does he say to God? He says to God, you know, you gave me a thorn in the flesh, an angel of Satan to beat me to keep me from getting proud. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in other words, this weakness was given to me so that I wouldn't be proud. I consider that egocentricity, that pride, to be much worse than the blindness that I'm suffering. Mm. But then Paul goes on to say, and this is important for your son, he goes on to say that as I grow weaker, Christ grows stronger mm. in me. In other words, I need the Lord, right? I, all right, I'm not going to have the ability, you know, to play baseball the same way the other kids play baseball. If I got the regular display show, etc. Right? I'm not going to have uh, the social interact. You know, some uh, people will shy away from me, but others might gravitate towards me. Mm -hmm. You know, and so uh, you know, I find that you know my blindness actually. A lot of people come to me because of, of, of the malady that I have. Mm -hmm. It's not off-putting to them. Wow. Now, as a younger person, I didn't have this as a younger person, so I can't relate directly to your, to your son in that respect. But mm -hmm. I can say, though, that um, y you, know, you, you have to look at this in terms of Paul. When I grow weaker, Christ grows stronger in me. I let Christ more deeply into me. I'm actually letting myself be transformed more by him by the very fact that I have to put up with some stuff that's really, really difficult for me. It makes my life harder. You know, it helps, you know, uh, being blind, you know, Paul's stumbling around there, you mm -hmm. know, in Galatia or something, and, and he's got to have some person leading him, you know. I'm always on somebody's elbow uh, leading me around, most assuredly Jones. <laughs> and, and, you know, trying to, to you know, get, get, be led. I mean, how does it feel? Well, you know, I, I'd probably like to have my own autonomy, quite right. frankly. However, I can tell you this. There are real benefits. There are benefits in my human relationships with people. It makes me humble. It makes me much more empathetic with other human beings who have weaknesses. I find, you know, a community with blind people too or people who have disabilities. I've got an automatic community with them and I can help them and support them just as they can support and help me. Right? And, and that's a very good thing too. And there's a variety of other things uh, that can happen. I, I have let God definitely, I mean, what Paul said there about letting Christ into your life you know, uh, you know, because you, you, when you're weak, when you're vulnerable, you, you need the strength of God. And you let him in, and lo and behold, right. you discover him. And if you discover him, you'll follow him more nearly. If you follow him more nearly, you're going to get to heaven and lead a lot of other people to heaven too. So just say, hey, if you find your, your faith increasing through this, if you find that you're letting God in because yeah. you're praying more, you find yourself vulnerable, you know, consider that you could actually you know, do something religiously to help somebody. Maybe be a priest. Uh, maybe be, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, somebody who, who helps to lead others to God in some lay ministry, whatever it may be, mm -hmm. right? You know, but there's something there. People who've struggled with weaknesses have a sense of God, and they lead a lot of other right. people to God. And what makes a more dignified life than that? I mean, you know, I mean, you, you couldn't ask for better. So don't right. think yourself accursed as St. Paul would tell us, right? You're not accursed. You may be different. You may have more challenges, but accursed you are not mm -hmm. because you will lead, uh, let God into your life ever more deeply. You'll find a community of persons who really need you, and you're going to wind up leading a lot of people to God. And so I would sh show this clip to your son, mm -hmm. but of course I would also at the same time get some testimonials of people who have, you know, had their challenges and have been able to do much. You know, I, I, frankly, I was going blind to being a president of a university mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I was able to, to, to do it and uh, because of the help and the support of people. But I think my blindness also helped me to be very humble and helped me to be very mm -hmm. empathetic and helped me to be a good leader. So, uh, you know, right. there are blessings in, what you, in, in disguise in what you might think right. is a curse, but it's not a curse at all. Right, absolutely. Very powerful, thank you, Paul.